tuning in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads from over 200 countries and your number one source in after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey! Hey, 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 what's up everybody? This is the After Buzz TV After Show for VH1's Love & Hip Hop Atlanta Season 3. Today we're recapping Episode 19 and 20, aka Reunion Part 2 and 3. I'm hosting today, I'm Cornelia, saying what's up everybody, and I'm joined here by the fabulous Nicolette Gona. What's up y'all, Jesse's so sad he couldn't make it tonight, he, he is. is traveling on an airplane right now. He is so sick too, Jesse is <laughs> sick guys, he is sick, don't send us any hate mail. Okay. Jesse will respond to your tweets about the after show, so okay. let's get into it, we're going to start with uh, reunion part two that we... Uh, Missed last week, so <clears throat> I mean, it wasn't much, much to miss. It sure wasn't. So we start the episode where we left off, part one. Jocelyn and Benzino, now Jocelyn and Stevie walk up on Benzino and Althea and get busy. I mean, they were coming for them. I mean, especially when Benzino made that comment. I mean, it was about to happen. Yeah. And the whole brawl started. I mean, Jocelyn definitely got Hothea real quick and real good. She did. But did we we didn't see any pun it was so much going on. Like we didn't see we just saw all pure scuffle. But what but they were saying that Benzino socked Jocelyn. Yes, I mean, apparently, but I saw a lot of hair pulling and a lot of hair everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like, you know, the main place where the girls, like, get the cat fights in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Josh, I mean, Althea, I will give it to her, though. Althea, was, she was holding her on. She didn't look like a sucker. She didn't. She didn't yeah. look like a sucker. Then we see, you know, everybody get escorted off the stage. Everybody was all, you know, mm -hmm. in a rage trying to right. figure out what's going on. Jocelyn goes to the back. They take her to the back. She breaks free and comes after <laughs> Tammy. Out of the blue, like just because she was on one episode and she came into your house and she didn't like the stuff that you were trying to wear. Like now you're coming after Tammy and Deb was not having it. No, Deb, was, Deb <laughs> wasn't having it. And my thing is, Jocelyn, did the issue with Tammy really bother you that much? Because she had bigger beef with other people. I think she was just jealous of Tammy. She just said, I think so too. Like Tammy was just sitting there like, mm -hmm. I think she has a problem with Tammy's <laughs> Bitch, face. She double checked because Jocelyn was on her way to come beat her ass. Mm -mm. So she came and at took Jocelyn. Took all her hair off. Knocked her ponytail <laughs> the off. The whole ponytail. Thing. Not the long ponytail, Jocelyn. Tammy was looking cute though. She was she looking was. cute. She was in that long. Like if someone would have done that to me, I'd have been so irritated. Now this, what, what do you think? Now I know Jocelyn is big as hell, but she's not big. But she, Jocelyn looked like a wrestler. The thing is, she just doesn't look like she gives a fuck. She don't. She doesn't like, care. Like there was no hesitation in any of this fight. Like shit was going down, and she was not stopping. Low key though, I think Tammy would have got, would have got, would have. I don't know. I know Tammy probably wouldn't have won because Jocelyn has her own size, but I think Tammy can get busy. Um, I, you can't did you tell see me. her pull the Ciroc bottle? She did. She she brought like two of them and she just started throwing them. Like, but look, did you see? She didn't even stop running when she picked them up. That's how you know oh, Tammy yeah. legit. Tammy was running. She didn't even stop. Like, oh shoot, let me grab these bottles. She ran and grabbed them in a swoop As at she the was. same time. Was like. <laughs> and through the bottles now i cannot imagine if her husband was there waka oh you know waka if waka was it. there the reunion would have had to been shut down somebody because died. autumn bottles would have been gone he would have just i go i'm like no waka i just imagine jared's going everywhere like he just started head busting motherfuckers like i mean but shit you know would have went I down because security guards could not stop him they couldn't stop him but no. i don't even think it would have gotten to waka because jocelyn wouldn't have came at tammy if waka was there jocelyn see that's the thing about jocelyn I don't jocelyn know. knows who she can and cannot mess know. with yeah she was coming deb about, was there though but she who would have thought that somebody mama would have count you know what I, mean? I know i know i'm just saying but jocelyn 
even when they grabbed her and they flashed to her face and what she was saying, she was like, Deb need to stay out of it because I don't want to fight her old ass. But low key, Johnson don't want to fight Deb. Johnson know who she can come at. And if Walker were there, I right. put I put $20 on. If Walker were there, she wouldn't even have bothered Tammy. She would have just stuck with yeah, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I don't think he, she would have even got to touch it because I really feel like Walker would have just been like, mm. yeah, he would have, yeah, Walker would have punched, would have broke her face. But, so mm-hmm. poor Tammy. I mean, and we'll talk about her and you know in the in the that part the three, but what she right. was saying. But then mm-hmm. everybody gets es- and you know gets um, escorted. escorted off of the set. That's when we get to the whole Jocelyn and Stevie bash session, right? Like, my thing is, it's like, okay, we seen the fight. I'm sure none of y'all really give a fuck except for Mimi because Mimi's just a sourpuss and she just, <laughs> like, everything just has to be like, you know. And I'm like, Mimi, you sitting here talking so much shit about saying how they have issues, bitch. Like, hello, they came for you this week, honey. If anybody has issues, you do, okay? Like, and they're real issues. Like, I mean, Jocelyn and Stevie, they just crazy, you know what I'm saying? But you really got some issues you need yeah. to take care of. She really does need some help. Like, you know, they're all in here, like, talking about they need an intervention, da da da. Well, I think the Bambi, I think Scrappy, I think all y'all need some interventions, okay? Mm-hmm. I think all y'all need to figure yeah. out what y'all on because all y'all crazy. Yeah. So everybody has something to say. Erica has something to say. Rashida and Kirk gave their side of the story which pretty much consisted of Rashida was like you know we over here chilling they like were- why does this why do we even care what Kirk thinks Kirk. okay like him and his Adam's yeah. apple can just chill <laughs> together like Kirk you know make sure saying? his backpack got right. up off of the okay. stage okay he was like you know I'm gonna make sure Tammy's cool who would have known they all was that cool but somebody had I'm to we, and we saw later Deb was about to, Deb took it oh, to Deb Jocelyn. She hit her with a little sock to the head one time. Pulled that hair out. Okay. I, listen, I'm not fighting Deb. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to go toe to toe with Deb. I ain't want to go toe to toe with none of them. I don't right. He ain't going to hit me yeah. in the face. Mm-hmm. So Mama D starts talking and who Lord knows what she was talking about. But pretty much she said, she explained how Tammy got attacked. She was the first person to uh, on that night to will say that she assumes that Jocelyn is not just on drugs, that she's addicted to the fame that she got from this show. And I can see that. I look at Jocelyn and I always say this, not necessarily on this after show, the same way New York from I Love New York took that whole like popularity and ran with it. I see the same thing for, with, with Jocelyn. The only difference is... Yeah. Johnson really is crazy and she really does need help. Yeah, but I mean, the the yeah. thing about this is though, when this is all said and done, people like that hit the hit the bottom the hardest. And I just hope that Jocelyn gets to the point where she sees ahead of herself a little like a little better so she can secure that fall because love and hip hop is not going to be on forever. Mm-mm. Everybody had their heyday and fell out. Where real and chance at? Y'all know I keep talking about real and chance. Where the hell is real and chance? <laughs> it's true. They were real. I remember real and I had a flavor flay. I had they a crush on the surreal chance. life. Everybody on the surreal life disappeared. Right. Oh my gosh. Love versus money. Like all those reality shows, VH1 reality shows, they had an era. Okay. And they're gone and they're done. So Jocelyn need to calm down. That and I, I kind of agree. Do you think it's a, do you think it's the fame or you think it's the drugs? I mean, now that you explained it that way, I can definitely see the fame. Like, I kind of see her a hot mess like Erica Mina. You know what I mean? Like, they're Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a little bit just on, like, the fame aspect. You know, they're kind of ahead of themselves in a way. And I just think she's um, very hard-headed. So a lot of the things – and she's young. So a lot of things she don't want to – she she gonna act like she don't give a fuck because she doesn't want to come off stupid and she doesn't want to admit to the things that she does so she's just gonna be the fabulous Jocelyn like she is and she's not gonna let it, what anybody says bother her because she's probably is so affected by it that she doesn't want to show and she just wants to keep on being that hard person that she is mm-hmm. you know I mean yeah no I, I I agree and I think um you know Jocelyn and her wildest dreams would she have ever have thought that this would be her life she used to be a prostitute stripping right. would you ever you know what I mean somebody like that you would never think that one day I'm going to be on a reality show that's booking me gigs I get to right. host parties and I'm right. pretty much the head the, like the star of this show right. she probably this is probably she never probably even dreamed right. of that but we'll get more into and, Jocelyn's crazy and show. personally I just think that it was kind of wrong that they were all just talking so much shit and they, right. weren't, even they weren't even there like let them speak for themselves like yeah 
yeah. Y'all don't need to be having like a bash session like over these people. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're all just in the like half of them probably don't even know them. Like, young Jock, what do you really have to say? Like, can you just <laughs> actually can he just leave the stage? Like, what we have nothing to say to you. You're just on here. No, it's you need to go back to the trap. Okay. Certain people need to be off be off the stage. Like Young Jock and really, Dawn. He and really was them. like, you know, Bobby and Whitney. Like, young Jock, that's all you got to say. Like, leave the stage. And Deb was just really wanted to hit him. Like, yeah, because uh, I don't want you I comparing the Queen of Pop right, like, to what are you uh, Jocelyn to- uh, Hernandez. Hernandez. Like, what? You will not compare the like, queen of just Bob sit to there, Jock. Okay, with your wannabe outfit over there. I can't. He was trying though. Jock trying. He mm. trying to hang on. I like mm. Jock. I mean, I mean, he's personable, uh, but he should have shut up with the Bobby it was and Whitney. Just weird. Thing. Like he should have just came out on a different show or something. It's just weird. So then we get to the root of the problem. They talk about once again the picture of Althea giving Benzino head posted on Instagram. Okay, we like. Yeah. They keep you know we know how it's going. Right. And then Kirk brings up the fact that. He thinks Benzino is over this whole friendship because he's never seen Benzino this upset by a situation. And I mean, right. I got I can kind of see because considering the fact that Benzino really loves Althea, he really does. He really loves her. That's really crazy. Like it's so weird. Like he really is like in love with her. Like he's like madly yeah in love with her. <laughs> so meanwhile, my question that I wrote in my paper, guys, why is Nico still on the stage? Okay, and then <laughs> they were still talking, right. all talking about Jocelyn and Stevie, which, you know, continued on. Wait, can we pick out when they asked Nico, you know, why weren't you trying to find me and me? And he oh, no, just... we're going to get to that. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Did you? Okay. So uh, <laughs> this is right now. So Mimi explains what happened with her. She was walking to her dressing room, her and Arian, walking, do, 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 do. Stevie J darts past because she said he looked like he was on something. His eyes, he was in days, you know, right. another land. Probably was on that coke. And then <laughs> Jocelyn walks past. Mimi says something slick. Jocelyn stops, came, comes back and was like, what you said to me? You're not going to be talking that to me? And puts the right. beating on Mimi in the stairwell. I mean, Mimi, you should have watched what you said, honey. You know she wasn't fucking around. You know she wasn't, especially... If she just beat up Tammy for no reason. Right. Like, like Mimi, she definitely coming for you, girl. And would have fought dead. Like, th- this girl clearly is, is retarded. <laughs> and then of Sorry to use the word. <laughs> nah, she's not retarded. Mimi or Jocelyn is something wrong with her. Yeah. Um. So that's when Arian was calling Nico out. Like you said, basically, where were you in regards to Mimi? Nico flashed to Nico in his dressing room talking on the phone when nobody is on the phone because the damn home screen was still up. So he <laughs> in there talking about, yeah, so what's plan B out here? Plan B for you is to get Invisalign. That's okay. plan B. <laughs> so And some braces. Okay. And some braces. Nico. That's uh, plan C. I actually can afford it. No, but. Nico teeth look like a stressful game of Jenga. I'm <laughs> over him. Okay, I'm over him. I was just so mad he was putting on the stage, like with that gremlin looking face. I just can't. So, you know, that's when we cut to Tammy telling mm-hmm. her side of the story. Tammy was sitting pretty. Deb, you know, we see Deb get at Jocelyn. Like I said, she got a little, you know, a little sucker in there, a little mm-hmm. sucker punch. Good for you, Deb. Clap it up for Deb because. If you see your daughter in law getting right, attacked uh-uh. out of nowhere, <laughs> Johnson was like an animal. She yeah, really she pounced on playing. little Tammy. Deb was right to get in there. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, um, Deb, you know, she is, Deb said, because that's what Mama D was like, Deb ain't into this. This ain't her thing. Oh, and right. Deb said, oh, no, don't get it twisted. <laughs> I'm with it if it comes my way. That's right. right Deb. Like, Mama D, what you talking about? <laughs> like, uh, even if you're not about the fighting, but if yeah. somebody's attacking you human nature is to defend yourself right and if somebody is beating up on your daughter-in-law mm, i'm right. gonna, let me jump in it that's mm-hmm. like if somebody's whooping on my niece right i'm going we're oh, getting right. busy and i'm the last person to get into right. a fight but, i ain't that but i'm not mm-hmm. gonna let her get beat up so meanwhile what i caught when tammy and they showed deb on the phone with waka in the background oh, and yeah. deb was talking like yeah let me tell you what jocelyn doing Mm-hmm. Tammy, I called Tammy saying, F him, because he's supposed to be here with me. So t- Tammy was pissed that Walker wasn't right. there. Mm-hmm. However, you pointed something out. If Walker was there, he would have destroyed that whole set. Mm-hmm. It would have been done. It would have mm-hmm. been a wrap for them. So 
So that's pretty much that. Mm-hmm. Tammy explains the beef between her and Jocelyn, which we knew. Which was not that Which true. was stupid. Right. Rashida thinks Jocelyn is insecure. She, she is. is. <laughs> Don, Joss, Don got invited. So, yeah, right. I mean, big ups to Don. Don out just out here just trying to make a buck. I mean, I mean she's just trying to make a living. I can't. She says Jocelyn is territorial like, and insecure. So and Don gets emotional. Right. Because like she was kicking it with Jocelyn. And it's crazy. Jocelyn looked really, like, crazy. Yeah. I mean, like, she definitely looked like she was ready to fight bitches. Mm-hmm. She looked like a, like a rattlesnake yeah. about the punch. I can't wait to get into that. Like when they had their separate interviews. Mm-hmm. So then um, they asked everybody on stage. Is Jocelyn and Stevie married? Who cares? Like Dawn was like, no, Stevie's her pimp. We kind of knew that Stevie was, was her pimp. I, I mean, know. he ca- remember all first season he kept saying, I like I got you out of strip club. I you signed like you're signed to me. He kept making it seem like she owned her. Yeah. So yeah, we knew that. You know, she she used to be a prostitute. So right, it's unfortunate. Mimi at this point says they asked Mimi, are they really married? And Mimi says, I don't really care. Okay, so Mimi, we spent three episodes what? being forced to watch you track down these fake documents have a meeting with Benzino right. Dawn about... trying to get the paper the, the magazine uh, take trying to get the article out of the magazine you put us through that torture because we at home did not care we didn't care right? and now you, you don't, don't care. care you need to care because right. you made us watch so mm-hmm. I, I mean I get right. it now she probably has some time to watch the episodes back and she probably saw how ridiculous it was mm-hmm. so thank you Mimi yeah um that was pretty much it everybody was still talking about how Jocelyn needs gu- guidance uh Kurt it was just yeah. Deb, it was just a, a pretty much a, I a was like really session. bored it I was, was like boring. shut up all of you like can we get to the fun parts like yeah. I, like what are you guys like y'all talking about like this is so damn serious when the episodes y'all be throwing cups throwing water and all this shit so when there's a, a battle fight whatever y'all making it the biggest deal of life like come on now y'all ratchet as hell like let's keep it going yeah. like this ain't nothing new to y'all y'all be fighting all the damn time mm-hmm. like yeah no it is you know it is the same old thing and yeah. You know, it was just like, okay, so, and none of this, Jocelyn and Stevie, you, when you talk about people, when they're not there, they're more, un, they're not likely to accept it because mm-hmm. to them, it's like they're talking behind their back. So right. all of that was lip service because we at home knew that Jocelyn and Stevie were crazy. Right. They knew. And, but Jocelyn and Stevie won't, won't believe it. And we'll get into that, especially towards the end when Jocelyn says she don't need therapy. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> let's start with part three today. Okay. <laughs> we open up with Mimi and Nico. and Nico, aka get off of my TV because uh, my eyes are bleeding. Right. Mimi is convinced that this luggage was stolen because she was there. I was there when the luggage was stolen and I saw it for myself. So I just can't get around the fact. Wait, so was it like stolen like it never made it off the airplane or? Or like, were they standing there and someone grabbed it in front of them? And Nico was probably like, yeah, that's the one. And then they just kept on running, you know? Like, I'm kind of confused. And I feel like she's trying to stick by her story because she just is so messed up with all her other stories that she wants to stick with this one. Knowing damn well, and everybody knows that Nico leaked the tape. I think, and I said this before, people don't even check their cell phone charger. Why would Nico check a camera and equipment once? So if you did check it, okay, so you were sitting in the you know, airport waiting and somebody picked it up out the seat next to you? Okay, sure. So let's say you left it in the overhead compartment on the plane. Okay, sure. They usually check the tag and they reach out to you or they take they have it sent to right. the baggage claim so you can get it at the end. Okay, sure. No, what happened was Nico took that memory car out the bag and that camera, put it in another bag, left the bag in the airport and was like, Yo, me me the bag gun stolen. Like the bag didn't get stolen. <laughs> 
I mean, that's what I'm saying. And and poor Deb. I mean, she was really trying to get through his head that he just mess messes up all the damn time. Deb ain't but, having it. But he seriously was like a blank canvas. Like he didn't care. He don't care. He did not care. He was just in there like, I mean, that's just my opinion. And the fact that you won't take a lie to text or text, like, no. Like, you look like a punk. You're just a punk. Like, you, you're you sitting there while, like, Arian's basically going in in your life. And she, you can just tell she was just so angry. She like, was so Oof. angry. And he's just laughing. Like, he just is laughing the whole time. Like, he's a fucking joke. He's a fucking he is joke. A clown. And that's the thing. Straight up. Arian, she was, hit, she was hitting him with the truth. But Nico, the type of person, he's so conniving. So conniving. And he's such an asshole that it don't matter what she said to him. Because he's just going to okay. laugh it off and make you even more upset. Oh, yeah. He's just going to, like, hmm. Like, the whole time he was just sitting there, like, I mean, that's your opinion. Like, dude, no, that's everybody. I'm looking at your face. That's everybody's opinion. I can't. I'm over Nico. So, uh, and shout out to Samore for giving Nico the side eye. Because if you peeped when he was talking and she was looking at him like, if you don't shut your ass up. Seriously. Samore was giving him the side eye. Shout out to you, Samore, because you know they too. He always was giving him the side eye. Like, everybody, even like the dudes, they're like, man, you ain't shit. Like, just you ain't own shit. up to it. At this point, just let us all know. And we would all be like, all right. And Nico, if you're listening. I mean, we still wouldn't like you, but. Sure wouldn't. You know what I'm If you're listening, Nico, Mimi is not going anywhere. Obviously. Okay. We like, see what? this. She said, we still have sex. We don't have sex. We've had sex. So that means y'all still having sex. Like, it don't matter if it was once or 10 times. You know, when I found out he was married, you know, that obviously, like, really hurt our relationship. Like, bitch, you should have been done with him. Like, you should have, like left him but i guess the dick is just too bomb for her like it, you can find a better dick let alone you can find a better face like let alone you can find some better teeth let alone you can find you can just find a better face mimi like come on now like what are you really staring at when you're having sex with this man like the wall so she said she isn't she said i'm I, have, I don't have anybody else to have sex with well then don't have sex or get a bullet ma'am like you can get you can get a like toy, i cannot believe she she sounded so dumb <laughs> so dumb she's like i mean just for y'all to just shut up you know i'm just like having sex and i have no one else to have sex with so so then get so but that so that means that so you have masturbate. to fill the void so, masturbate and if you have a masturbate. void that means it has to be filled at all the, this at all times you're an no. alcoholic you have to drink at all times you have that to means have you don't have sex time. because the dudes you have a sex with are it's ridiculous trash. mimi needs help she girl i would uh. so like how can you have sex with somebody who's lied to your face over and over again and embarrassed and you. And he doesn't care. Embarrassed you two seasons in a row. That was like twenty. That's twenty. Like twenty episodes a season. I just. I really can't. Forty episodes. This dude been dragging you. Mind you, they ha him and his wife have been together for two and a half years. Oh, that's ironic. Ever since him and Mimi got together. He a lie. You a damn lie. It could. It, he. A, we've been separated. We've been separated. No, you a lie. Because Such if, a liar. if it was that much space between them and things right. were rocky, you have no problem telling the, the woman you separated. You know what I mean, dudes? Drop that we separated bomb, and they ain't even really separated. So yeah. Nico, if you were really separated, and why did she still separate. care? Why did the wife still care? Obviously, because you guys aren't separated. Like, come on, Mimi, and you're just so dumb. I just Mimi can't. is ridiculous, mind you. Like, talk about an intervention. She said, Girl, <clears throat> "You go to therapy. She needs help, just with Jocelyn." So she said. This their sex tape was the highest grossing sex tape of all time. Now, if you're listening or watching this on YouTube, can you please fact check this? Because I find it extremely hard to believe that out of all of the vivid sex tapes, this is including the Kim Kardashian and Ray J tape, Pam and Tommy Lee, Tila Tequila, all of these sex tapes that came out on vivid that had some type of star power behind it that the Mimi and Nico uh, sex tape is the highest gross sex tape of all time considering the fact that her main demographic are the, is, are the top bootlegger and bootlegging culture in, in America the only reason why I think it could be possibly true because they got a lot of promotion for this video if you think about it the other ones were actual homemade leaked videos okay so 
you know, there wasn't really a push behind them. They just kind of fell in the scene. Oh, shit. So-and-so has a sex tape out with so-and-so. I mean, Kim's at least, like, she had her show keeping up with the Kardashians, whatever, whatever. But it still was unknown. But, like, this was, like, out there known. I mean, they got so many publicity. Like, they were putting it out there. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I can kind of imagine how a lot of people probably did because... They all the promotion and shit, but still, I mean, it's whack as hell, probably. But so I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this then maybe it was the highest grossing sex tape of all time for that first week, exactly. Not overall, there's nothing you can, yeah, you, as based on how many people know Kim Kardashian and know Pam and Tommy Lee, mm hmm, right. and then versus Mimi and Nika, like, right. over, yeah, oh, I mean, come, <laughs> knock it off, girl. And Nika. I'm a, they, they come on like she was like it's the highest gross of sex every yeah. time and, and was bragging said, about it like it was a number one right. album and I was on billboard like hot 100 i was cringing like, this ain't billboard i mean she said that she was gonna be taken care of for the rest of her life are you I wonder how many more sex tapes you had to come up with to keep that like it's not like i don't i still don't understand how it even came to this right like all she had to do to me it's so simple because and nico started talking that mess about if they didn't put it out it didn't matter who had it it was gonna come out anyway and that's not true because uh guess what stevie tried to b drop eve's tape and she put the paws on it she put the kibosh on it everybody j-lo got one out there and she put the kibosh on it like mm -hmm. it's not that's what she having with one of them her little dance like one of those dudes <laughs> she used to de be with back in the day i can't <clears throat> she put the she put the mash on it yeah so i just don't uh, to me i'm not buying it i'm still not buying it nico needs to get he needs to go away he needs to crawl yeah, back into Nico's his hole that he came in he looked like shit. a mole um we talked about him not him being married again deb is not having it right with nico. she really be and she really was trying to get it through his head but literally, as she was yelling, it was just bouncing off his forehead because he was, like, in La La Land thinking about, like, probably, like, what the fuck he was going to, like, wear later. Like, he, just thinking about just an arrogant situation that he just has in his head. He just don't give a fuck about anything. Yeah, he don't care. But she was dropping that knowledge on him. So, you know, we're still together. They're still together. And then Carly, <clears throat> Carly Red. Well, yeah. it, hold on it was kind of upsetting that arian was trying to say that they weren't together and then mimi's like well like <laughs> we do she actually was. still she have did. sex and you know it really upsets me that they don't get along like it's mimi. like oh so y'all still together Ugh, move on mimi needs help because after all this you still with him mimi oh, is did you notice that they didn't even talk about carly and john for what you know like, I know that's so stupid I low key forgot about him until I she said about like, the sex tape my point exactly why was Jock even there poor thing he, seriously he why was he even there time. so Carly they know. asked everybody to have a sex tape Carly said yes yeah, she has one uh, and she wouldn't drop it for money she would drop it for revenge Carly get a grip that was just something she just needed to get some light on on the right, show girl get a grip well, at this point for what I wouldn't get it for money for revenge against who revenge <laughs> unless he uh you putting something like in his booty it don't Young matter Jock, like what are you even talking about then we jump to kalina ashley and tony that was so awkward and weird like ashley is like, really on here like why like, <laughs> she really had a cameo like, I, and she's like turn up like, come on ashley we get it like, ashley yeah, knock it off so and Kalina's like pregnant like it's just weird she's pregnant it's like Tony didn't expose his fingernail which I'm happy we didn't have to yes. see that thank you Tony <laughs> then uh you know what I will say this the way Kalina was talking about how she met Ashley and they were talking about their friendship she was a little more she looked a little happier about that relationship than she does with Tony she talks with more love and, and admiration for I Ashley know. than she does Tony. And I'm wondering, Kalina, is Ashley the one you really want to be with? And if you do, cool. But that's what it looked like. I was like, oh. I mean, she was really smiling and giddy about mm -hmm. her. I was like, oh, she really likes Ashley. Poor Tony. First, he didn't get invited to the threesome. Now this. Yeah. That mm -hmm. fingernail. So, you know. All right, <clears throat> let's get to the good part. Well, I guess it's good. Yeah. Producer Stefan sits down with Stevie and Jocelyn, Benzino and Althea after the fact because obviously the reunion right. went to shambles because of the fight. Ugh. 
So it was pretty much the same thing. It was Jocelyn and Stevie. First, he asked them, are you guys married? No. And we know this. And literally, I mean, that whole interview, and I, I watched back, like, what they played back. There's no way. They're all over the place. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. So, John, they both look ridiculous. Stevie, like, sure. So ridiculous. Sure. Whenever you answer it with sure. And she really was like, oh, yeah, I have it right here. No, I'm just kidding. Ha, ha. Like, hey, Justin, don't even do that. Just say like, no. Right. Like, say we don't have it. How much are you going to pay for it? Like, what is your life? They still lying like anybody cares. Like, y'all, Justin, you know, we don't care that y'all right. not married. Like, nobody cares. Like, just say you're not, and it's fine. We'd be like, oh, joke's on you. Okay, yeah. whatever. So then Stefan asked them, are there any photos? What did you wear? She said she wore a BCBG dress, girl. Why dress? The way she take pictures, she would have had an Instagram picture. He was picture wearing a black polo. They would have had Instagram pictures of it because they stay on there. Seriously. Then uh, he, you know, Stevie calls Benzino a sucker because Benzino got the drop on Jocelyn, got a little sucker punch in. I mean, so this is, a, you're not supposed to hit women. However, what if the woman is crazy in hitting you? Is it justified? I'm going to say no still because, you know, you're not supposed to put your hands on a woman. But yeah. this whole time, Jocelyn was saying she was going to beat the, sh- the shit out of Benzino. Right. So, I mean, it's just crazy to me because the whole interview between Jocelyn and Stevie, and I feel like Stevie wanted to keep it a little bit more low key, but Jocelyn was just out there saying whatever. Like she didn't care. She's like, you know, yeah, I wanted to beat her ass. I wanted to beat her ass too. Like I think she definitely should have calmed down a little bit before she did that interview because I think you know they should have kind of kept it a little bit PG. Like, they should have. You know like, or I don't think she knows how. Yeah. She looked when I was when she was doing this interview, and I was looking at her. I she looks like seventeen. Now, with all the makeup, and if you take all the makeup she off and like all the hair, girl. it's like a little girl. And I was looking at her because that's what you say when you and your homegirls got beef with uh, with exactly. the cheerleaders at the other school. And y'all be like, I go everywhere I go, I'm prepared to fight. And I'll be her ass, too. She wanted to. I'm going to beat everybody ass because, oh, like, well, she needed to get her ass beat. It's kind of sad. Like, she really, like, was okay with saying all that. Like, she really, like, when you really looked at her, it was very just, like, blank. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was kind of, it was really sad. It was sad. It was really sad for her at that moment. I thought she was crazy in the first part when she was fighting. Yeah. And then now it was like, this, she's, I really feel bad for her. Because it was like a little kid playing dress up and don't know how to control her emotions or thinks whenever I have a problem with somebody, I need to hit them. Because right. I'm like, I because that's all I know. Just right. hit you. Because when I don't like something, I hit, I'm going to hit you. Right. I feel, I feel bad for her. So she, but she said all the girls look thrifty when they said that Erica, <laughs> yeah. Erica said that she, Jocelyn looked like she came dressed to fight. And she, she did. Jocelyn had on a long gown at the last one. Jocelyn always is dressed to the T. She had on a Tarzan leather skirt and a, and a cutoff <laughs> shirt. She wasn't playing. She came to fight. They came to fight because her and Stevie were plotting. There's nothing you could tell me to make me not make me believe that she came to fight. They asked her about Tammy. Like, why did you even try to fight Tammy? And she said, I wrote it down. I'll break her pretty face. There you have it. Jocelyn has a problem with Tammy, not because of Tammy came in her house and and told me me and them. It's because she's pretty. And Jocelyn can't handle that. Like she can't handle it. They don't even gotta be like that. Like they're not even in the same like in the same group. Like, right. Why does it matter if Tammy's pretty? I break her pretty face. Like why? 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 And then what? And then Walker gonna kill you. So right. they Stefan asked about her being crazy and you know she needs help. And just like a pra- a crazy person, I ain't got no problems. But Stevie was like. She needs some therapy. At <laughs> Steve, least he, and mean, Stevie, 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 he needs to go too. They should just go together and figure out what their problems are. Jocelyn definitely needs therapy because yeah. she, you know, okay. th- this is beyond, this is beyond repair. Like it's beyond repair. And I'm, I'm starting to feel even like, I, y'all know I don't, Jocelyn, I'm not the biggest fan of Jocelyn. Mm-hmm. Mainly because 
I get it if you're trying to turn up for the TV, but don't turn up, don't blindly turn up because when you fall, when this is over, you're going to hit the ground hard. And that's yeah. what I have a problem with. Don't, you can turn up and I get it, but don't turn up blindly. She turns up all the way. So she, you know, she really trying to take it to the next level. But she need help dude like i don't want to be no if i see jocelyn on the red carpet if i'm working hosting an event doing something and i see her i'm walking the other way because she ain't touching me right she's dangerous i'm afraid of jocelyn so benzino and althea he really loves her he does you think how do you think (laughs) she likes him I mean, I could see a little bit more chemistry this week. You know what I'm saying? Or like this, like the past couple like episodes, just because it's just funny. how She was like, well, you know, and he's like, no comment. She's like, okay, no comment. Like, like I said, no comment. And she was like, okay. okay. And then she's like, calm down, babe. Like, you know, we want another season of Love and Hip Hop. Stop. Oh, they're coming back. Right. Because it's going to be a fight. So he really loves her. Okay. So. He started that no comment to everything. Then he tried to fight Stefan. Right. Like, I'm like, he, Benzino he knew Stefan was going to come in here wanting to talk about the fight. He knew this. So Benzino got all upset about, you know, that they agreed to sit down again. Mm-hmm. And Benzino starts to talk again. He calls Stevie a weirdo. Um, him and Stevie, they're through. And pretty much it was, again, a Jocelyn Bash fest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Stevie thinks that that uh, not Stevie Benzino thinks Stevie is the way he is because of Jocelyn, mm-hmm. and I can see it both ways. However, I mean, Stevie always can. had issues though. Yeah, Benzino acting like Stevie don't got like ten kids with right. a bunch of a bunch of women. Like he always had these issues. So Benzino, I mean, he yeah. been your friend. You picked him, right? I just feel like there's just so much history and so much tea within both of their girls. It's just like it's never gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Then Althea There's finally no said once again mm-hmm. um, about her sleeping with Stevie. She again said, why would somebody lie about that? Yeah. Why don't he just admit it? Why would Why and would then, somebody and lie about And then he's like, well, because it. he was with Jocelyn and he cheated on her. And she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, baby. That's she's right. Like, That's true. <laughs> You're right. I did. So Yeah, I didn't really say much. It was kind of just, you know, Mm-mm. next season. We'll see what yeah. goes on with them. So, you know, yeah. pretty, but that was it. You know, it, it was a good run. This seemed like the longest season I've ever lived yeah, in my entire life. Yeah, it was pretty life. long. It but was it was long. entertaining. It was very entertaining. And we were glad that we could share our recaps and join us mm-hmm. for the Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Mm-hmm. We will be doing that one. I'm going to be nice, guys. I'm just letting y'all know ahead of time. I don't burn <laughs> no bridges. Uh, yes. okay. We're going to be nice, but we definitely going to keep it real like we always do. So True. make sure you tune in for the next season coming up. All right. We got we'll any predictions real quick, Nicolette, before we get out of here? Predictions for, for our um, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Okay, predictions. Who's coming back and who's going to stay? I definitely think that, obviously, Stevie J and Jocelyn are coming back, for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Benzino and Hothia coming back, hopefully. Mm-hmm. A little bit more surprises. Um, Mama T and them? Mm, they're up in the air, maybe. Yeah. Because people keep saying Erica is not coming back. And I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. I hope Mimi and Nico really don't because, seriously, if their relationship goes on after this, I'm just, I can't. Girl, I'm you serious, know they're I, coming back. Are you serious? They have to because mm-hmm. everybody's so disgusted with them. They're coming back. Only people I see not coming back is Erica, Scrappy, um, and Waka. Walker after this Walker probably pull out himself because mm-hmm. ain't nobody gonna put hands on Tammy I think Walker right. gonna try to get in the, he's he's over I think yeah. he's over after this I mean he was on tour like not giving a fuck like mm-hmm. fuck all y'all but he's gonna kill because he tweeted after uh low key he tweeted afterwards and he said Stevie J shaking my head so I think Walker when he sees Stevie J and them in the streets oh he'll check I him. think he gonna it's gonna oh, be yeah. a problem it's a problem he's gonna break he's gonna break somebody's face yeah um so with that said guys it's been a real yes it's been it's a been great fun. season a uh, lots of drama uh stay clear of those shower wires ladies and gentlemen yes. at home if you're gonna get popping make sure there ain't no video cameras okay. nicolette where can they find you on social networking you guys can find me at sensei don't play on my twitter and instagram so you can follow, follow me. me and you can follow me <laughs> at canelia twitter instagram and facebook guys it's been real see you here for love and hip-hop hollywood peace peace out from executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. 
to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.